and get this one over with quickly today. Everybody seeing this? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. So this first question here, you have to write the formula that expresses the relationship described. So C varies directly as K, as A. C is equal to K A. So you start with C is directly proportional to A. Therefore, C is equal to K A. And that's essentially what they want. I saw that in the answers, they put K is equal to C over A. But you know, you could just say that these two is the same thing. Right? And I don't agree with the answer that they have there because at the end of the day, this is a formula for K. And they didn't ask you for a formula for K. They asked you for a formula that expresses the relationship described. So that is the relationship between C and A. So this formula better describes a relationship between C and A. To me, anyway. Right? So if you had anyone, it's fine. Um, jointly proportional means that X is proportional to both Y and Z, and you would have Y multiplied by Z. So therefore, X would be equal to K, Y, Z. And I saw again in the answer that they made K the subject to the formula. You didn't really need to do that. I would have accepted it as it was. W varies inversely to x, therefore w is equal to k over x, right? so that should have been it. Just let me know, just slow down if, if, anybody, um, if anybody has any problems with anything, yeah? r varies directly as the square of s, so r R varies directly as the square of S, so that means that R is directly proportional to the square of S is S squared. Therefore, it'll be R is equal to KS squared, and that is our equation there. F varies jointly as X and Y, so F is directly proportional to XY, Therefore, f is equal to k x y. I will accept that as the answer. Right? J is inversely proportional to the cube of m. So j is inversely proportional to m cubed. Therefore, j is equal to k times 1 over m cubed. J is equal to K over M cubed, right? We have the next one. H is directly proportional to B, so H being directly proportional to B, H is equal to K B. X is jointly proportional with the square of A, that is A squared, and the square root of B, yeah? So therefore X is proportional to A squared times the square root of B, yeah? So X is equal to K A squared root of B. The other one, A is inversely proportional to B. Simple, A is inversely proportional to B, therefore A is equal to K over B. I don't think anybody should have problems with those. So now let's check out some of these guys here now. And let's see. Um, what we have to do is we have to find the constant of proportionality or the constant of variation. And we have to write um, a formula to express the relationship using that constant, right? So A varies directly as B. So A is directly proportional to B. Therefore, A is equal to KB. And then they give us values. When A is 15, B is 5. 
So A is 15, B is 5, therefore K is equal to 3. And so the equation A is equal to 3B should be our answer. Um, at the end of the day, the answers may have it in a different form, but you shouldn't have to worry about it. If you had that, that was correct. P is jointly proportional to Q, R, and P. R, I know, no, so, sorry. P is jointly proportional to Q and R. There's some bad grammar here in the reference question. Okay? So, P is directly proportional to Q and R, therefore P is equal to K, Q, R. And then they give you values, P is 12, Q is 8, R is 3. So P is 12, Q is 8, R is 3. So 12, K, 8, 3 is uh, 24. Then K is equal to 12 over 24, which is a half. So at the end of the day, P is equal to a half QR being your final answer. Right? C varies inversely as D. So C varies inversely to D. So therefore C is equal to K over D. And they give you C is 7, D is 4. 7 is equal to K over 4. 7 4 is a 28 is equal to k therefore c is equal to 28 over d is your final equation there um, t varies directly as the square of u so t is directly proportional to the square of u so therefore t very um so now t is equal to k u squared and they give you here when t is six u is three so six is equal to k three squared so six is equal to k nine and therefore k is equal to six over nine which is two over three so therefore your final equation is t is equal to 2 over 3 u squared. <laughs> e varies jointly as f and g. So E varies and if jointly proportional to both f and g. So therefore E is equal to k f g. Um, so E is equal to, sorry, you see here E is 24, is equal to K F is 3, G is 2, so 24 is equal to K times 6, K is equal to 24 divided by 6, which is 4, I believe, so 6, 4 is a 24, so therefore your final equation is E is equal to 4 F. W is inversely proportional to the cube of X and W is right. So W is inversely proportional to the cube of X. So W is inversely proportional to X cubed, the cube of X. Therefore, W is equal to K over X cubed. And what we're saying here is um, W is 54. And that is equal to K over 3 cubed. X is 3, right? So therefore, 54 times 9 is equal to K. And k will be equal to what is 54 times 9? 54 times 9 gives us 486. 
therefore, W is equal to 486 all over X cubed. H is directly proportional to G and H is equal to 12 when G is equal to 8. So H is directly proportional to G. H is equal to KG. So therefore when H is 12, Eight, and therefore k is equal to 12 divided by 8 so that is k is equal to 3 and 2 so therefore the equation is h is equal to 3 and 2j Then finally, well not finally, we just have two more. <laughs> um, A is jointly proportional with the square of X and the square root of Y. So A is proportional to the square of X and the square root of Y. And A is 25. Well, A is equal to KX squared root Y. And you see here, A is 25 is equal to K X squared. X is 5. So that's 5 squared and the root of 9. So 25 is equal to K times 25 times 3. Right? Obviously, these two will cancel, so 1 is equal to k times 3, so k is going to be equal to 1 over 3. So therefore, your final equation is a is equal to a third x squared root y. And now the last one here. Um, M is inversely proportional to N and M. So M, oh no, so it's inversely proportional to N. I hate how they word these questions. So M is in inversely proportional to N. So therefore M is equal to K over N. And they give us values when m is 1.8 and n is 2.1 so 1.8 is equal to k all over 2.1 therefore 1.8 multiplied by 2.1 is equal to k and k is equal to um, let me just pull up the trusty calculator 1.8 multiplied by 2.1 and that is equal to 3.78 so therefore, our final equation is M is equal to 3.78 over N. <laughs> right. Now, those were the first 18 questions. We have 20 more questions to go. And these are the more important questions. So these questions are CSEC level questions here. And this is what the kind of questions that they would ask in CSEC. So when I see you guys on Tuesday, we will see if we could finish off these questions live, right? So when I see you guys on Tuesday, that is how it will work. So um, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. I hope that these first 18 questions here were simple enough to understand. And I'll see you all next class.